Hi, I'm Leslie Hill, the director of the Women's Entrepreneurial Opportunity Center, and I am here today with Kim McMahon of McMahon Tire, and we are bringing you Getting Vulnerable and Going Strong. Kim's going to tell us a little bit about her journey of running the business, owning the business, accumulating the business, and really um, giving you all some nuggets to take away on building your own business. So Kim, explain McMahon Tire and um, where, like, how you kind of got into the role that you're in. Well, that was actually a journey, and it didn't start with McMahon Tire. We, um, as far as my journey here, I started, graduated from Valparaiso University, so did my husband. He came to, he's from Fort Wayne. Oh, nice. And he, my father-in-law started McMahon Tire, so okay. he had a job before I did, because it's a family business. So. Right. Yes. <laughs> so I came to Fort Wayne and started working at Fort Wayne National Bank. Okay. And loved it there. Like the gorgeous building yeah. downtown? Oh, that's fun. It was so much fun. Downtown was not as much fun as it is now. Right. Back then, back in the 80s. But it was the best job. I loved it. So what did you do there? I worked in the trust department. Oh, exciting. Yes, it was wonderful. The people were wonderful. My customers were wonderful. Loved it. Um, I worked there for 12 years. Long time. And then they got bought out. And they closed oh, yeah. our department. And uh, so it seemed a good opportunity to join the family business. Hi, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this would be great. <laughs> and uh, it's a big difference working, yeah. you know, at a pretty big company going to work for a family business. So it took a little transition. Yeah. You know, it was, but it was awesome. And it's awesome in a totally different way because you have way more control over things. Yes. You know, which is a good and bad thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's no learning. Pressure. It's learning, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was it was really interesting working my way up. You know, I started working for my father-in-law and doing filing, answering phones, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. and learning the business. Learning every part of it. Mm -hmm. And so, Ten years later, <laughs> when he was ready to retire, um, I kind of stepped into his shoes, and again, big learning curve. Yeah. And that's and that learning curve continues, obviously, but that's how I got where I am now. So, what is your role there when you say you stepped into his shoes? I what, like. I realize you wear a ton of hats in a small business. So, yeah. what does that look like? Well, I'm the president of the company. But that, you know, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but it sounds so good. It does sound really good. <laughs> it does. But I do everything. Um, I do all of the accounting, um, marketing. I stay out of the sales. <laughs> because oh, yeah. that's, you know, you have to know way more than I do about that. But I do like to go out and talk to the customers. So you can do the that's kind of Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and that took some getting used to also because I was used to being in the back and doing my thing and then having to get out in front of customers because they want to see you. You know, it's a family-owned business. They want to see a McMahon. Right. And even though I'm not, you know, I'm only legally a McMahon. Yeah. <laughs> but it works. Yeah, and of course. So that, that took some getting used to, um, getting comfortable being in front of people. Mm -hmm. So what, um, when we think about you taking control of the business in that sense, how did that transition go? Was it a long transition and he taught you for a long time or was it like, nope, I'm done, jumping in? Um, it was a long transition. Yeah. I worked with him very closely, learning everything he had to give me. I mean... He had been in the business you know, for his whole life, and so it, it was really taking what he taught me and then kind of putting my own spin on it. Because you have you know, his experience, which was, you know, you, you can't put a price on that. Sure. But he's an older gentleman. Mm -hmm. I was a younger woman, totally come at things different ways. Yeah. And think about things maybe from different viewpoints. 
So um, I had to kind of take what I thought was right, along with what he, yes. you know, what he had been doing, what we had been doing. So it was a long transition, but then like once he retired, I mean, he, it was like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <good>. Okay, <laughs> I got this. <laughs> and it was a little scary. Yeah. Because you have all these people who are depending on you. Right. And, and how every many decision. employees are there? We have about 85 employees. Okay. Yeah, that's growing. amazing. Ooh, and that's growing. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's exciting. But you yeah. also get that kind of panic in the middle of the night. Like, oh my gosh, all these people depend on me. Yes. We'll be okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Breathe. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's exciting. But So I grew up, um, I am the daughter of an entrepreneur as well. I don't think we ever used that word, but as a small business owner. Uh -huh. And he did, actually it's Hannah Brothers, oh, painting, sure. and I know that they use you. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and so I think about just watching him and my uncle and how they ran the business and thinking about coming in to take over a role from them would have been, I, it would have been night and day different because A, they didn't use computers. Mm -hmm. They never had them. So when my brother-in-law started working there, it was like, well, you know, I know you're doing estimating, but it's on a pad of paper, a lined pad of paper, usually yellow. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and um, and so we he had to help them transition to that point. But then it would have been even more different because everybody has their own different personalities, like you're saying. So mine, where I'm very kind of open and I can go talk to anybody that is not my dad and so I'm sure that that would have been completely different so I can imagine mm -hmm. what you what that transition looked like and how different that role is I bet now if he tried to come back and help he would have to do that long transition <laughs> into knowing how it's being run yeah mm -hmm. it's it's funny that in the times right after he retired and he would come back and <laughs> he would be uh, yeah, come on, I, I'll, I'll take care of that for you. And he would grab a you know, piece no. of paper and pen's like, okay, so what are you looking for? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's going to be about 50 bucks. And we're, we're all like, no, oh I my guess. gosh. <laughs> Please don't do that anymore. <laughs> yes. Come back anytime, but not behind the counter. Because <laughs> yes. it is when, when things change and they're not there to see it and be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Mm -hmm. And then thinking of it from their standpoint too, like walking in and this is your baby and all of a sudden yeah. it's like, what is this? Yes. He, um, at, at our Glenbrook store, when I first started working there, there was tires everywhere. Like, um, you know, on the walls, on the floor, they were everywhere. And I walked in and I said, oh, I hate the smell of tires. Oh yeah. It's the worst. Oh, terrible. Oh, it's terrible. And everyone that worked there was like, what do you mean? What what tire smell? And I'm like, oh my goodness. It, there is, trust yes. me. So it drives him crazy when he comes in the store now and There's all the tires are gone. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, but, and every time he has to comment on it, where's all the tires? Do you guys sell, do you still sell tires here? <laughs> yes, we do. No. no <laughs> so when you're talking about locations, you have the Coldwater Road location and then where are your other locations? So then we have a truck center that's at uh, Coliseum in Goshen. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a big big building but we also have we do retail out of there as well and then we also have a wholesale division that also is out of, based out of there. Then we have one out by uh, the airport um, that does mostly mechanical for big trucks. Oh wow. And we are just opening one on Illinois Road. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah, and then we have one in New Haven. Wow. Yeah, they're everywhere. So how many, How did you expand since you've been there? What did it look like when you uh, first took over? When I first took over, we just had two locations. We had the truck center and, um, and the Glenbrook store. But like when we very first started, we had what was Starbucks downtown, what is Starbucks downtown, that was our very first location. Oh, really? Yeah. Where that cool garage yes, area is? That oh, was our store. Fun. Yeah. Um, they put a lot of money into that. Because yeah. <laughs> that store was not structurally sound, but oh, it beautiful. Yeah. Like, so beautiful. Yes. 
But um, so we had that one. And then um, kind of across the street, Kitty Corner, what is now uh, left field of Parkview Field. No, we had a store yeah. there. So we had two stores downtown, which I wish we had now. Yeah. <laughs> Downtown's so great now. I know. Love it. But um, so both of those got taken over. Mm -hmm. So we've we've kind of expanded, you know, a little bit east, and then um, we'll be going southwest next month. Yeah, so that's fantastic. Yeah. So when you look at that, how do you determine where you're going to go? So a lot of people are at that stage where they're right at that crossroads of growing, and it's scary. And how do you get through? What research are you doing? Who are you talking to? How do you come up with that? It, it's, it depends. Sometimes it's opportunity. Um, the, the store we have out south by the airport um, became available and it was like, oh my goodness, that would be a perfect place to put this uh, mechanical, you yeah. know, a shop that does mechanical and because the location, what the traffic that goes through there. Um, so it was opportunity. And and then we were like, okay, so we're gonna staff this with, <laughs> you know, oh, good. We it's, love a, the it's a great place. <laughs> yeah. we need. And you know, that to me is is the key to all of the success and expansion that we've had is our amazing employees. I mean, you can't do any of that without having people who believe in what you're doing and that you trust and they trust you. And that's not easy to find. No, you know. <laughs> and actually, especially right now, we've had a lot of conversations with business owners about a if people are applying, they may apply, but they won't come in. Mm -hmm. So then now you set up appointments or um, interviews, they don't come in. If if they come in, they'll say, "Okay, well, great, I'll take it," and then they don't show up, or then they take it and then they just. <laughs> stop showing up. There's no, hey, I'm done. They just don't come. Yeah. There's, um, I, and that's, I don't like having online applications even. Yeah. I want somebody to come in, you you see how they fit in. You mm -hmm. see if they're a part of, you know, could be a part of your team. Um, it's not easy to find. It's I mean, it's not easy to find people and it's really not easy to find people that will fit into your organization. Because if you get people in there who, you know, they're not quite right, yeah, that can ruin everything. Yes. So that's so difficult. So when when you're looking at expanding, that's that's a big thing. And do you just go by gut? Like I can tell Sometimes. by talking to you. Yeah. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that through the NIC and through our program through the WIAC, we do PIs, which is the personal index. It just, Judging, it's so crazy. You all you do is answer maybe fourteen different questions, and it spits out this whole report about who you are. And you read it, and you're like, <laughs> "How is that so spot on?" That really is creepy. Yes. And so we do that for our um, our clients. So they come in. Okay, are you a business person? And it'll kind of say, "Here are these are your strengths. Not only these are your weaknesses, but this is how you gear." So for me, I know this is gonna be a shocker, but. I am, I don't mind breaking the rules if I want to get something done. I am pretty headstrong. And yet, I want to look at the numbers, but I'm not going to be the one that's going to like pull all the numbers. I, in order for me to stay in the big picture, I can't get too far into the weeds. So that's a really cool tool to help some of these new that's business That's really owners. interesting. That's yeah. really interesting. So just know that that's something yeah. in the future if you need it. So you go by gut, yeah. and um, then how do you determine? So now you've staffed it. How many people did that location need? Well, you know, it, that's one of those things where when you're looking for employees, and you may end up, you find, you know, you find this great employee, and you're like, I don't really have a place for him, but it's a great employee, so yes, we'll take him. Yeah. Um, I found that by doing that, mm -hmm. the business follows because you have you have great employees. Customers are going to seek them out, and they're going to trust them, and that helps drive business. So by by getting and keeping your great employees, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of a self fulfilling prophecy. 
you know? I mean, the business yes. will follow where great people are. And that's worked so far. That's fantastic. I hate to say that's a, I'm leaving it. I, I, that's one thing I actually do not leave up to luck is our employees. You hope that, that everything follows the way it should, uh -huh. but it all starts with that. So you have the location, um, you found the building, now you have it staffed, the, you know, the business is coming, then you see what's the next opening. How did that happen? Um, we had always wanted to go out southwest. We had wanted to be out in that area, but you know whether if, you know if, if you're going out and looking for something, you want to find the perfect place. Yeah. You know, you're like, no, mm. oh, no. If it was a half mile further, <laughs> then uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And then you find the one that's a half mile. Well, if it was a million dollars less, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so find, trying to find the perfect place is so difficult. So actually in this situation, it was a pre-existing building. Oh, nice. And okay, well, we've always wanted to be out here and it's not exactly what we wanted, but we can definitely make it work. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, in that situation, it just wasn't perfect. Yeah. But it's gonna be great. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, that was kind of fell in our lap also, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, in a good way. Yes. And so, yeah, it, it's it's going to be the same sort of, uh, okay, now we got to, <laughs> now, now we here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Starting over again. <laughs> but we, uh, we do have, like, such good people that help us find, I mean, like, our current employees are so great at, like, hey, you know what? I've got this friend who would love to work here, you know, and how great is that when you have employees that want you know, yes. their friends or their family to come. We have so many family members that work for us. We're like one great, big, huge family. <laughs> that is so amazing. That That's is cool. a huge compliment. It is. It is. Because really, honestly, you think about where you work, and there's always things that you can go on about. But for you to say, I love it so much, I want my mom to work here, my sister, my brother, whatever. That's amazing. Yeah. It's it's a it's a huge compliment. We we appreciate it so much. Yeah. <laughs> how do you think? Why, how do you think that happens within the culture? What do you do? Um. It honestly is about my husband. I mean, it starts with him. He is, you know, because I said I'm more of the my comfort zone yes. is more in the background. So you guys um, have to realize this is not comfortable for her to be. Nope. <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> right now, we are so thankful that you um, But he is a, you know, like, um, cooks lunch for the guys, every, not just the guys anymore, right. all the employees, yes. um, every Friday. Or, you know, we'll bring in, and, and the holidays, it's a carry in, and he gets everybody involved. He knows when, you know, people's spouses are having a baby or when they're getting married. I mean, even small things, yeah. you know, um, he just treats everybody like they're family. They're not employees. And that's a hard thing. You know, like when you have 85 employees and he, he honestly does that, makes a point of doing that. And um, so that kind of carries over to everybody. Because if they see, you know what, the owner is, out there grabbing tires and he's not just sitting in the office you know writing right. stuff writing do down this, numbers do but yeah. yeah I mean that makes a big difference when you see the owner doing what he's asking you to do right you know he's right there with you and mm -hmm. I, I think that that culture just carries through with him and through all of our and our employees we have so many long-term employees and that makes a big difference yeah, too. it does because that helps the culture just spread because you know, this is how they came into the business, you right. know? and this is what they know. And yeah, he's, he's amazing. He really is. <laughs> how did your dynamic change as a married couple once you started working together? That was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I cannot imagine. <laughs> when, when I started working there, we actually at one point worked across the hall from each other. Oh, and you're like... Hi. Uh, Hi, honey. And, and, yeah, I, yeah. And I, I started be, this morning. I'd and... be sitting there, you know, like quietly doing my work. Yeah. And he's yelling at people and, you know, like joking and all this kind of stuff. And I'd be like, okay, don't I you have some work to do? Yeah. 
<laughs> and that, I mean, it took me a while to get used to, you know, this is how things are here. This isn't just sitting and quietly, you know, you're actually involved with people and interacting and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was a big lesson. Yeah. You know, and we had to learn how to talk every day. You know, every, it wasn't just when you get home, you're running into each other every day. Yeah. And so that, it was, it wasn't easy. It really wasn't easy, but absolutely worth it. I learned so much from him. I learned so much just from seeing him interact with other people, and it made me much more comfortable getting out and talking to people. I it really, did. it really did. Did you have to? Well, I, mean, I, I don't want him to see this though. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want him to know that. <laughs> such an important part of me. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Did you have to, like, try, you know, sometimes you, if you go to a marriage counselor, they'll say, you know, work on affirmations or whatever. Um, were there things that you had to, like, okay, I really have to try to look him in the eyes or I have to go home and I have to try not to talk to him about work yeah, tonight? Or That's hard. It's hard to not talk about work when we're yeah. at home. Because, especially now, when we're not together, we're not in the same store. Oh, um, yeah. So... There is a little more of that kind of conversation at home because, you know, I'll talk about what, what's happening at these stores and he'll, because we don't talk during the day about that right. kind of stuff because mm -hmm. we don't see each other. When we were together all the time, yeah, there was no talk about work at home. <laughs> we got it all we out. Shut it down. Yes. yes, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine because I think of just going home and talking to my husband we do this thing with my kids because they never tell me what happened during their day, so they have to tell me three things that happened. Because yeah. it would be, I don't know, I don't remember. And they're five and they're eight. And you're like, <laughs> yes, you do remember. You're not I thought teenagers. you were going to say they were like 15. <laughs> yeah. No, they couldn't remember from, you know, two hours beforehand. Um, and so we do this, to, okay, tell me the three things, and then you can get up from the table. And my mother-in-law said to me one time, do you and Brian do that? Oh, that's a really good idea. <laughs> so, not that we go to that extent, actually, but it made me start thinking, we'll talk to each other, but you're also talking to the kids, or you're doing the dishes, and you're not looking at, you know, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. But when I do talk to them, it's usually about the kids or work. So, I don't know what I would talk to if we didn't have either one of them, and be like, yeah. how's the weather? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty mild outside today. Snow again. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yes. It, it's different when you're, because my kids are gone. Okay. So we're empty nesters. So it's much easier than to, like, so you sit and read the paper and you can talk about what's going on in the world. And well, it's a whole different. Was a paper. I know. Yeah. And we actually do read a paper. <laughs> so I can't do it online. I, I know I can't either. Yeah. I can't either. But yeah, it, it's totally, it, it totally changes the dynamic once the kids are gone. It really does. That's kind of fun. There, there you'll re remember the world outside. Yeah, it's well, that is so alien to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't have to do any specific. You didn't have to try to do certain things. First, it was we're not going to talk about it, and now you kind of have to. Yeah. Yeah. And we do, um, we do try to limit it. We try to um, not talk about it all the time because then it gets overwhelming. You right. never shut it off. Um, so yeah, it, it, it has to be a conscious thing. You're like, yeah, we're not talking about this. On the weekends, we're not talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> and then inevitably somebody will call and something comes up and we have to talk about it. But, right. You know. But for the most part. Yeah, you try to have different things. My husband's also a baseball coach, oh. and so at, at Canterbury High School, okay. and so we talk about that a lot yeah. during baseball season. Uh -huh. So, oh, yeah, that's there's so other things. <laughs> and when you were working for your father-in-law, how did you handle that? Because of course you want to come home and you want to tell your significant <laughs> other, "Hey, you know this boss of mine." You know what your dad did? Yeah. <laughs> how do you handle that? You know what we we got along so well that it really, it actually kind of excluded the rest of the family, because he and I would be like, oh, and then you know what else? And you know who came in today? You know, so 
we kind of had this thing that kind of excluded everybody else. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So it was like fun for me, especially being the in-law. Right. Know? Yeah. So like, we oh, had a I special like bond, you know. Yeah. Um, so that was really, I, I don't think that I ever had a problem like, oh, your dad. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was never like that. That so is so we impressive. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I think of my brother-in-law and I think, oh, oh, I don't know how he went home and talked to my sister. <laughs> well, and, and at, even at family gatherings. You know, you think yeah. if, if things weren't going well, yes, ooh, mm -hmm. that could be really bad. Yes. But no, luckily we didn't have that problem. Oh, that is fantastic. Yeah, we were very lucky. Yes. I don't know what he thought. Yeah. He may have felt differently, but he didn't show it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he seemed to think I was fine. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah. So thinking about the new locations, how long does that... Um, decision last like when does the seed get planted and then how long does it take to come to fruition is it different for every scenario it, or it is and I don't know that's a really interesting question because this location that we're opening it's literally been two weeks Whoa. like from yeah it was ridiculous and I'm I'm, I'm losing <laughs> sleep over this because it's Poor moving thing. so quickly and things have to get done and but I've never been through something like this. You know, usually it's a, a process. Right. You know, where you find the location, you, you have to order equipment, you have to find employees, you do the marketing, and it's a process. This one has been, Wham, bam. here we go, and we want to be open June 1st. Um, oh my gosh, that's from Yikes. Yes, it's wow. terrifying. <laughs> that is so but cool. it's, so, it's exciting. On the, you know, I've, yeah. I've done this both ways. And this way is really, really exciting because you're, um, okay, well, we're going to meet out there tomorrow and I'm going to meet with the architect and we've got to order, we've got this on order and it's all very immediate. Yeah. And so you're, you're seeing the fruits of your labor much quicker. Oh yeah. That's so it's kind of fun. Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And then how do you juggle all of that on top of your already workload? Cause I, <laughs> I think just looking at, you know, my piddly workload and then thinking of expanding to that kind of yeah. magnitude, I can't imagine how my brain could shut off. Do you just lay there at night and sometimes? <laughs> I, don't know, I, I really I yeah. do sometimes. <laughs> I do. Or, or even like when I'm exhausted, like, okay, I'm going to sleep. I'll wake up and be like, oh my gosh, I have to remember to do this. And then you can't fall back asleep because you have, don't want to forget that you have to do this, you yes. know? Uh -huh. So, um, yeah, I've started writing things down when I wake up because I'm, otherwise you're up all night. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a short-term thing. And yes. the, the positives are going to be so great once it's done that it's worth it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You guys have such a good name in town and your quality stands for itself. I will never forget my dad was like, Okay, we'll go to McMahon and then get your tires checked and I was like, Okay. So I'm looking everywhere for McMahon and I was like, I don't I felt like such an idiot. I was like, I don't see it and it's like he goes, It sounds like McMahon and I was like, Oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm that girl. Wait. But I had just moved here, so I didn't know. It's okay. <laughs> so, just for all of you watching, it's spelled a little, just a little yep. different than what it's it is. It's the Irish. Yeah. It's the Irish spelling. There we go. Yeah. My father in law is very proud of that. I bet. <laughs> and I do like it's different. Yes. Yes. So, Absolutely. if they could have just told a 25 year old, hey, it's, it's over here. Um, so, thinking of even that with kids, did your kids work in the business? My oldest son worked there for one summer. <laughs> it's hard work. Wow. <laughs> Not that he doesn't want to work hard. He does. But um, I think it was really difficult for him having his mom work at the store that he was working at. Because mom would go out there and be like, is everything okay? You yeah. doing all right? And all, all the other employees were like, we've never seen you out here before. <laughs> Yes, I have. <laughs> so guys just, does anyone else want water? <laughs> I got some popsicles. So yes. it was 
lasted one summer. Uh, well, but he still knows how to change a tire and change oil, so. There we go. Yeah. Yes. Well, he tells me. Lasting impression. Absolutely. <laughs> and how many kids do you have? Just two. Oh, wow. Two boys. And then what did the other one do? He did not work there, but he had other jobs. Yes. So he, um, no, neither one of them have shown any interest in, in the family business, which is hard. That, yes. You know, when mm -hmm. you, I mean, we have other employees that I think of as, like, kids. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, the kids are not, not too interested. Mm -hmm. yeah. So with Hanna Brothers, same thing. They were ready to sell, and they were thinking, they were hoping one of my, because it's all girls on my dad's side, so Hanna Brothers doesn't really go so well. <laughs> <laughs> so he never really wanted us to be too involved. I think another way for him to shut that business off when he got home it was oh, like yeah. it was so consuming. Yeah. And he had to just kind of let it go. So my sister worked for him for one summer, <laughs> and I had a boyfriend who worked for him oh. for a little bit. <laughs> and <laughs> so that was kind of fun. And then, of course, my brother in law. But they really wanted it to be blood because that's how they are. So they wanted it to be one of my cousins. And they asked both of them, well, one's a surgeon. So he wasn't really interested in painting. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a preacher. So he was like, cool, not my line of work. <laughs> <laughs> and that was really hard for them, really hard. Yeah. And then there was me over here like, I want to be an entrepreneur, really, I really do. And they're like, no, oh, that's nice. Like, no, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want, and more so I think, just the different people that are in service jobs, you know, all over the place because sometimes they're temporary and they, you know, they have ridiculous things go on and he's like, eh, <laughs> I do. <laughs> I don't think you want to do this. Yeah. And, and, and being a woman in a male dominated industry is, um, is kind of interesting as well. Yeah. You know, because when you, um, you know, you go to different meetings and things like that, and you're the only woman around, um, that takes a little getting used to for them as well. Right. You know, and how to interact, you know, it, it, it's it's just so different. Yeah. And it shouldn't be. I know. I mean, it shouldn't be, I but know. It, is. it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it would be the same thing with, with you. Yeah. You know, because, yes. and you'd walk in there and be like, hi, hi. I'm here. <laughs> It's time for work today. <laughs> You're like, great. Exactly. <laughs> okay, here we go again. Yeah. Yes. Oh, God, it's another day with this one. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, so did you ever, does any point in time stick out in your mind? Like, I remember trying to get this, this done, and they looked at me like I was a girl, or, you know, anything like that? Um, no, not as much that as I've had men come up to me and say um, like somebody was taking like we were at an event and he was taking pictures of I don't know, just general yeah. pictures mm -hmm. and he was like don't feel bad that I'm not putting you in the picture but my mom or my mom my wife would be really mad if she knew there was women here and I'm like I'm sorry <laughs> what <laughs> and this was not a long time ago this yeah. was relatively recent and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I've, you know, been coming here for quite a while, and, but sure, fine, whatever, you know. Yeah. So. Odd. Yeah. I, and I don't think that men always understand the difference. Although that could have totally happened the other way, too. There could be women. Oh, absolutely. That could have said, oh, I don't really want them to think that men are here. Yeah. And it, there's a good chance that the, they, she didn't really feel that way, and that was just his, Yes, you know. his internalizing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that is a good point because there are things that happen. I don't think when you are a minority, the majority doesn't completely understand um, how it feels yeah. to me. And just like I think I have African American friends, and I'm in my head, I don't see them any different. But then I do definitely feel like the odd man out when I'm the only yeah. white girl yeah. sitting there. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is how you feel all the time. Right. Yeah. Right. It's it's strong. Yes. <laughs> it is. Uh -huh. Yeah. And my sister worked for um, a manufacturing or a builder here in town, and it was almost all men again. And I just think 
same thing that you're going through. I don't under, you know, it's just such a different world. It's interesting when, like, our customers see me at, at the store, they will automatically... I mean, more like when I first started. Mm-hmm. Um, oh yeah, you can tell there's a woman here. They're like, there's a woman's touch, and they're like, like getting rid of the tie. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, you do this, that right? Smell? Yes, exactly. <laughs> or um, you know, redecorating, or um, you know, putting good coffee out, you know, things yes. like that. That mm-hmm. it's the little things that make the difference. It's not the big things, right? You know, I mean, it really isn't that. I do things so much differently. It's it's in, it's in the details, and I think that's the difference between most men and women. Yeah, I really do. I mean, there's some there's some guys that are very aware of, of the little detail type things, but a lot of them are just kind of big picture. Yeah, we're doing fine without looking at. Yeah, I can't walk the, unless I walk through tires. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> So what I always do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's I, I think that's really what what women in leadership versus mm-hmm. men. I think that's where it comes down to is the details. And that's a whole customer service concept. Yeah. Um, it goes above and beyond mm-hmm. things that they haven't dreamt of yet. So a lot of times we'll talk about um, finding that niche. So you might have a business idea, but you may not know exactly how to either execute it or <clears throat> how it plays into the big role and things like that where you're seeing the little coffee drink it does go a long way when you don't think that it's going to you think oh, who cares but it really does take that extra effort it, it does and people notice people people want it and even if they don't expect it particularly when they don't expect it yes. that's when you really are like yeah and you know they're thinking. Nailed it. Got it. (laughs) (laughs) This is different. Yeah. And that's that's huge. Mm -hmm. So thinking in in that context, how else do you think you go above and beyond for the client? And granted, someone may think it's no big deal to offer a nice cup of coffee, even if it's a Keurig machine. Mm -hmm. But what are some of these other little touch points? Oh, gosh. You know, and and I'm not taking credit for this, Mm -hmm. but because a lot of this is from our employees. We do things like, if it's raining out, we'll pull your car up to the door so you don't have to walk through the rain. Yeah. You know, or, oh, um, you know, offering somebody rides, you know, if they want to, our Glenbrook store is right near Target, so, you know, you want to go to Target, if you want to go to Glenbrook, we've got a nice shuttle that, you know, will take you wherever you want to go, pick you up, you know, just trying to make the experience better, yeah. more comfortable. I mean, who really wants to go and buy tires or have their car serviced? It's, it's, yeah, you know, it's, it's an inconvenience. That, yeah, you're like, man, another $500 yeah. this month. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So we try to make it as easy and as comfortable as possible. And again, that comes back to the employees yes. being willing and able. And I mean, they want to make sure that the customer is taken care of. And I, I, I think again the little things like that um even we do um we do we give a lot of money back to the community Mm -hmm. and or time you know and a lot of that comes from the employees and the the customers really appreciate that you know they'll see that we um help scan or the spca or you know all these different organizations and that really you know rings true with a lot of customers and they appreciate that yeah so you know we, we try to really work at a, at a bunch of different levels because mm-hmm. um, everybody wants different things. Right. You know. When you're thinking about the, you know, being a male dominated, whenever I walk in, I don't feel like I'm a girl who doesn't know what I'm doing. I walk in and they say, hi, are you going to be under Brian? Are you going to be under Leslie? <laughs> and they find me. And then everyone always has a smile on their face. And that's one thing that seems so silly, but and it's genuine. It's not like, oh, there's a customer here. Let's Hi. paste it on. <laughs> yeah. It's, they've already been talking to a client, so they're already kind of smiling because they have that rapport. Or they've been on the phone, and so they get off. And it's just genuinely 
kind of a nice place to walk into. So, well, good. Um, yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's so nice. I used to train employees on brand, being brand ambassadors, and one of my biggest things was we get into this, and we have so many tasks we have to do, and that you look up and you're not really thinking. Yeah. Your mind is still in the computer, but you're looking at the customer. And all the customer sees is you're looking at them and you're not seeing them and you're not smiling. Mm -hmm. And every time I walk in to McMahon, and Grand Echo is the one at Coliseum, or Coldwater, so mm -hmm. I don't know where everyone is like, but whenever I'm there, I feel welcomed and smart enough to be in there. Nobody's going to take <laughs> advantage of me. And, <laughs> so it's kind of nice. Well, good. I'm glad you're... I'm glad to hear that. And you give, is it free tire rotations if you buy the tires there? Yep. Which is another kind of big thing. You always go back. It's not that it's expensive to go somewhere else to do it, but it's a good experience, and I know that I'm going to buy tires there again. I, I think that, you know, when you talk about coming in and seeing a smiling face, um, I, I think that that is so important that when you walk in, you're comfortable. Yes. And that... You know how sometimes you'll, like, you'll go to the grocery store and their employees are like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? 15 more minutes? And they're talking to their manager like, yes. where do I get my break? Yeah, right. <laughs> You're like, oh, sorry. Yeah. I didn't convene. Can I pay for this now? <laughs> so, it's so true. It is. And, and that was when I started working there, I said, we we need to be on the same page on this one. I do not want to hear. And of course, they wouldn't do that. Right. But, but exactly. But we don't even want that you have bad. to be so aware of what you're saying in front of customers. Because even if you're not saying that, if it sounds that way, right? You know, even if you're like making a joke about something, mm -hmm. uh, you have to be very aware of what the customer. You know, what is the yeah. customer hearing? <laughs> I know you're joking, but. Yeah. <laughs> like my husband is so sarcastic. I'm sure someone walking into that would be like, "What? Well, I can't uh, believe what he just said." Yeah. <laughs> so we've talked about having our kids in the business, working with your husband, and how that's a hard transition, but then it becomes a little better, a little easier. Working for your in-laws. Do you remember? Well, we've covered all of that. I know. Expanding wow. family. <laughs> yeah, that's been amazing. Um, do you remember at all when your husband decided also to take over? Like, how did that work with your finances and things? And not that you have to give all the details, yeah. but. That was, um, he was, well, he, okay, so he started working there when he was, you know, right out of college, so 22. And it was, and we had, we got married right away, had kids a year later, so. I'll just, just do it all one Right, time. you know, get it over with. <laughs> yeah. You know, money is not, not that not. important, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, so and so we had a lot going on there. And so it, he was probably 30 by the time he that, that he bought into the company. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, it's been a process. You know, it wasn't just like one big, yeah. you know, one big expense. But... Um, yeah, it, it, that's definitely a huge, you know, expense, no matter what you're doing. Right. You know, buying a company, even, you know, on a more granular level when you're talking about, you know, paying employees, buying equipment, you know, all that kind right. of stuff, cash is, is, is such an important part of, of the whole being a small family run business. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that, but. On the on a family level, that was that was tough. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I mean, absolutely worth it. But it it's a it's a struggle. Did you have to? Do you remember going to meet with the bank, or was that mostly? We did. Yeah. yeah. So did you? Lots of times people will say, "Okay, I got a line of credit," but then they're also, "Well, we needed an actual loan." And then there are people who are like, "Oh, I'm just gonna get a grant." <laughs> not really how it works. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that might be some unbeknownst miracle that happens. But yeah. It's not typical. And then you can also do investors. So how did you know which route to go? Um, we actually were partners already. My, when my father-in-law started the company, he had a partner in Paul Zerker, who um, they're down in Monroe, Zerker Tires down in oh, Monroe. Oh, yeah. They have been partners since the very beginning. 
and um, we'll be celebrating our 50 year anniversary next month or next year. So they've been together a long time. Yeah. Um, and so you're still partners today? Yes. Cool. Yes. And um, Pat, my father in law, was one of Paul's original partners. We also have, he now has 250 partners all over the country. Um, Paul does. And so we've had this partnership with him. So that was huge. Yeah. Because that made, he was so well known and made it easier for us to get a loan because he was involved. Oh, thank so you. Yeah, that makes nice. a big difference. Yeah. So I'm not sure we had the typical experience of going through, you know, what's the best route mm -hmm. because. And I'm very glad for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because that could be, talk about losing sleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we, we were very lucky in that respect. Nice. Yeah. Do you want to share any other little tidbits that you think may help a person, woman, um, thinking about joining a family business? Well, I, I don't know that it would be necessarily a woman thing. Uh, because I, I don't know that it would be specific to that. Sure. But um, the family business can be very difficult. It, it can be, you know, I was lucky in our circumstance, but you can see where it could create all kinds of conflict that can overflow into your personal life. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it's a great experience, and I so much appreciate being able to be a part of it. Um, and I love being a part of a small business where you can decide, hey, that store's available, <laughs> let's buy yeah. it, you know, <laughs> <That's right. Do laughs> it. without having Two to weeks. Do yeah, here we go, <laughs> I got this, you know, without having to go through multiple levels of, okay, check with this person, check with this person. Um, so there's so many awesome opportunities to really um, become a leader even if it's reluctant, <laughs> right. that's very and, true. Uh, because you have to, you have to. You know, there's so many different things that you have to do. You don't really have a choice. You know, when you're in a small business, uh, family-owned or otherwise, um, if you're not going to lead, who is? Right. And and so it's it's a learned. It's something you have to learn, but you have to do it. And. I guess that's that's really my big takeaway from you. You need to be really ready to do things that make you uncomfortable. Trust me. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> well, I seriously cannot thank you enough for coming and being on camera when it's so uncomfortable, but also for sharing so much. This really helps us get out to the community but also the viewers feel like oh yeah I can relate to that oh I can do this and they can come back to this and they can watch it and say oh that's what she said I remember that okay I'm gonna go try that and those kind of things so well, thank you I, so I hope it was helpful and I've enjoyed it I have enjoyed talking with you thank and you. so thank you very much thank you and thank you all of you for watching getting vulnerable and going strong